So it's time again to do a little bit of uh, water microscopy. Look here, this is a bird bath. I'm going to put it, of course, under the microscope. Hi, hello and welcome. Microbe Hunter here. So last time when I was here and when I put a sample of this water under the microscope, I found many, many rotifers. So I'm going to see if I'm going to be also successful today. And of course, uh, I forgot uh, my pipette uh, today. Uh, so if I want to take a sample from the bottom um, of the bird bath, I have to agitate the water a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour in um, a little bit of uh, water like this to agitate yeah, the bottom. And uh, look, uh, looks doesn't it look beautiful? Very green, a lot of sediment here. So I'm quite uh, sure that it's gonna, there's going to be something interesting in here. So, well, back at home, <laughs> I think we're just going to start uh, putting it um, under the microscope. I'll let it stand now for a couple of minutes. So all of the solid material started to settle down on the bottom um, of the tube. And this is uh, from where I would like to collect a sample. Yeah, So there are a few solid particles visible in here. Small drop here now on the microscope slide. Ah, maybe a little too much water. Well, we're gonna see, uh, it's, yeah. Um, otherwise I'm just going to use a tissue paper to remove um, any excess. And uh, of course the cover glass uh, goes on top now. So here we go. And of course <laughs> the cover glass is floating away. So let's uh, use a little bit of, of tissue paper to remove any excess uh, water. The solid material should of course stay beneath the cover glass. And I think we're just gonna put it under the microscope and maybe we're going to be a little bit lucky. We'll see. Yeah, and to look at this, what I found uh, right away. It didn't take me long to find uh, two beautiful specimens um, of rotifers. Here's one and here, here's the other one. Yeah, slowly and uh, graciously moving along the microscope slide. So let's just follow one of them. Um, you can also see that there are plenty of uh, smaller um, creatures uh, swimming around. These are mostly ciliates. They're single-celled those ciliates. Um, rotifers, however, are multicellular animals. So actually, they do not really belong to the microorganisms because microorganisms, uh, strictly speaking, are single-celled. Um, and uh, those rotifers are actually true multicellular animal. Look, uh, here, uh, here, here's another one, okay? Uh, so they seem to like it there in this bird bath. And uh, yeah, what they're doing is they're of course uh, decomposing whatever falls into the bird bath. You can ah now you could actually see how it was actually extending its uh, yeah um, its so-called its corona that is the ring of cilia the ring of uh, tiny uh, hair that are moving, and uh, this is why originally the uh, rotifers were also referred to as wheeled animals because uh, this uh, ring of cilia um, actually uh, looks a little bit uh, like like a wheel, like a spinning wheel. Yeah, occasionally. Yeah, you can see it again here. Um, how it extends. Um, yeah, uh, those cilia, those tiny little hair, and this way it's able to generate a water movement. Yeah, and uh, it's able this way to, um, of course, uh, suck up um, detritus and other particles, bacteria, maybe uh, decomposing matter, um, and uh, using it um, and to use it as a food source, of course. Yeah, so let's let's keep on following it along a little bit, and you can also see that it quickly retracts uh, its uh, ring of cilia when it touches something. It's a form of protection, maybe. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to even go up a little bit with the magnification, so maybe we can get a close, maybe we can get a closer look. Yep, so this is now at a slightly higher magnification. What a beautiful, what a beautiful <laughs> specimen here. Um, they, of course, lay eggs, um, and uh, this is how they reproduce. And uh, the majority of those rotifers is actually female. Um, so they found uh, an ability to reproduce uh, from an unfertilized egg. Um, so scientists for many years, years were kind of wondering if this is possible, how, how do they actually generate genetic variability, genetic diversity, if uh, essentially the egg cells um, are not fertilized, and this is actually a form of so-called asexual reproduction. Scientists for many years were kind of wondering, well, how are they actually then able to survive if they do not uh, reproduce sexually? And then they found out actually that uh, those rotifers have a remarkable possibility to directly also exchange DNA with each other to increase uh, genetic variability. Yeah, so I'm drifting off a little bit into um, the depths of biology, but I think for right now we can just enjoy a little bit, uh, yeah, the intricate uh, nature um, of, of these uh, beautiful animals here. A very common question that I'm often asked is, is, is what good are they? <laughs> what do they do? 
And uh, uh, those uh, rotifers, just like uh, many other microscopic animals and also, of course, fungi, bacteria, protozoans, and so on, um, are important decomposers. So what they do is, is they break down organic material and uh, by cell respiration, first, of course, they digest the material and then they do cell respiration and then they produce carbon dioxide. So they are essentially removing um, the organic material again and returning it um, into the carbon cycle um, yeah, in the form of carbon dioxide. So plants can then, of course, use carbon dioxide again to do photosynthesis. So without those uh, microorganisms and without those microanimals, rather, um, yeah, it would not quite well be possible to break down um, all of the organic material that collects uh, in water, in this case. Yeah, so they play an incredibly important role um, in yeah in ecosystem, just like, of course, many other um, organisms do as well. So this here is actually quite a nice size comparison. So in the center, this large structure that you see, that is the exoskeleton of some, some insect. And then there are two rotifers here. As you see, you see how different uh, the, the size is here. And inside the exoskeleton, inside the yeah, skin, so to say, of the insect, you can see that there are also tiny single-celled um, protozoans um, also moving around. Yeah, so a very nice example how decomposition takes place uh, uh, directly in nature. Yeah, and this rotifer here is now trying to go into the exoskeleton, maybe almost uh, getting stuck a little bit here. Yeah, yeah so quite flexible, uh, those animals. Yeah, and, and look now, um, the bottom one here has this uh, oval round structure in them. This could actually be an egg that's uh, about to be laid. Um, so um, it's quite well possible that, uh, that this one is in the process of slowly also reproducing. Yeah, but um, I don't know when this is going to happen, when it's going to lay its egg. Um, but uh, it's uh, quite well possible that uh, it's going to do that soon. Well, that's it again from my side. I hope that you liked the video. Please do consider liking and subscribing. Well, and I wish you, of course, as always, all the best. Happy micro hunting and uh, see you around next time. Bye-bye.